Is it just me? Or have those two barely spoken a single word to one another? I know, right? But after everything that happened with Megal, is it really any wonder? Kinda puts a damper on the whole journey though, huh? How long do you think they're gonna keep this up? If it bothers you that much, why don't you ask them? Why do I have to ask? How come you walk together like that? Uh, she really doesn't beat around the bush. You mean Kisara and myself? You hadn't noticed? You've been practically joined at the hip ever since we left Vicent. I guess it's force of habit, most likely. I was always ready to protect him, should the need arise. It sort of came with the job description. Right. From being in the Elder Menencia Guard. Although, Dohalim's pretty capable of defending himself, isn't he? Having guards doesn't necessarily mean the one being guarded is weak. No one's perfect all the time. Even so, it's not like they're entirely wrong, Gisara. You're no longer in my employ, after all. I don't know. I mean, if it's what she's used to and you're both comfortable with it, then who are we to judge? But she doesn't serve him anymore. It isn't normal for her to keep following him around like she still does. You know, she's probably right. And a lot has changed over the last few days. I guess it wouldn't hurt to rethink our relationship in light of the new circumstances. Perhaps I'll give it some thought, after all. Does that sound all right by you? Of course. You might want to stop asking his permission for every little thing while you're at it. <laughs> Sorry. It's not that easy, shaking off old habits. I'll probably need a little time to get fully used to it. I've noticed that sometimes we come across enemies who fight like you and try to dodge our attacks at the last second. I hate those guys. I can get some hits in when they move in to attack, but otherwise they slip past damn near everything else I throw at them. If what you're seeking is a way to more reliably hit them, there is a solution. Try to outclass them on reflexes? I possess the ability to command Earth Elemental Beings to some extent. They emerge as the land itself and take root on my command. They will swiftly bind the enemies, at which point you can dispatch them. Huh? Uh, what he means is that he can make plants grow to hold the enemies in place. At least I think that's probably what he's saying. I'm glad at least one of us understands him. So basically, if we find an enemy that likes to dodge, we should let Dohalim handle it. I shall do what I can within my modest means to help. Why are you looking at me like that? That armor you wear is standard issue for the Menensian Guard, right? Originally, I've added some flair to it in a lot of places. I noticed. Especially with that open back. We guardsmen pride ourselves on never showing our back to our enemies. It's my way of making myself live up to that. Plus, it makes it that much lighter and easier to maintain. Hmm. Dohalim, do you have anything to say about this? Every guardsman is allowed to wear their armor as they see fit. And you, La? Huh? Why are you asking me? This looks perfect. Guaranteed to hit the spot. Kisara, let's talk for a bit. Maintaining your shield? It's becoming a familiar sight. Miguel was the one who taught me how to maintain my equipment after I first joined the guard. Now it's just a part of my routine. Your brother always seems to come up whenever I talk to you. That's because we had no other relatives, so it was just the two of us growing up. He was my idol, the one I looked up to and wanted to be like. When I became a guardsman, Lagiel wasn't too pleased to see me at first. It was Megal who really welcomed me aboard. Lagiel? Oh, right. She was Megal's second in the Gold Dust Cats, wasn't she? That's right. She's always been a very critical and down to earth person. In other words, the complete opposite of a dreamer like me. You're more an idealist than some pie-in-the-sky dreamer. Even so, 
That's my brother's doing. He'd never let me stop seeing a brighter world. He always did what he could to keep me smiling and happy. You must have meant a lot to him. He wasn't just kind, either. He always worked so hard to set an example for me and everyone else around him. <laughs> he was a true big brother. So much so that when he thought I was asleep, he'd slip out of the house to go training on the outskirts of town. You seem to know a lot about it. That's because I only pretended to be asleep and would follow after him. Hmm. You know what? I'm at a good stopping point with my shield. If you've got time, how about I tell you a couple more Migal stories? I guess I'd better get comfortable. I'll take watch tonight. It's okay. Before we go, do you guys have everything? Something feels odd here. Be on your guard. I just noticed none of you other Danans have spirit cores. Why is that? Both of my parents were part of the resistance in Calaglia. In fact, my birth was kept a secret from the Renans. Mine too. We always lived in hiding, so I never had a spirit core embedded in me like I was supposed to. What about you, Alfin? You were a slave in Calaglia before all this, weren't you? To be completely honest, I'm not sure why I don't have one. All the other Danon slaves around me did. I was the only exception. They tended to keep their distance from me to avoid attracting any attention from the soldiers, because of my mask and all. What about you, Kisara? Do you still have your spirit core? No. I was able to find a good Renin doctor who's sympathetic to our kind, and had them remove it before I left. They did such a great job, the procedure didn't even leave a scar. One of the benefits of coexistence, huh? I know that once the spirit vessel was shut down, there wasn't much need for me to hurry. But still, I didn't like having that mark of servitude lingering on me any longer than I had to. It may sound a little strange to hear me say this, but... I'm just me now. Not a guardsman or a slave. I'm my own woman. And this is my chance to have a new beginning. This sure is one rugged road. You'd think they'd keep this at least a little better maintained, right? Why spend energy fixing that which is rarely used? Repairs require time and effort, which in our world means slaves, often in great numbers. Ah. For you, it may be a simple request, but that can quickly become another's difficult burden. Nobody gains anything without someone expending effort. And you know, somehow that someone always ends up being a Danon, while the Renans are the ones who gain. True enough. Ideally, in a perfect world, I think it's only fair that the ones who need it should be the ones to perform the work. However, when doing so could be dangerous like it is here, there are many who would prefer that it be others who risk their lives in their stead. So, what you're saying is that people will just put up with the inconvenience until someone else comes along to fix it for them? Indeed. And it is those who can no longer bear that feeling that inevitably take action. Much like the Danans in our group do so now. As strange as it may be to hear such a thing from the likes of myself. It's true that most of the Danans in Calaglia have been resigned to just accepting things as they are. Still, we can't just blame them for... <sighs> what are you making that face for? You're not worn out already, are you? <sighs> nah, just regretting I ever said anything in the first place. You got some interesting moves there, Dohalim. I'm glad you're on our side. I'm simply glad to hear that I can make myself useful to you all. Huh? What's wrong? We seem to have come across some rather unusual objects. What, you mean that pile of garbage? No mere garbage, I assure you. Still, I've never seen anything shaped like it before. I'm intrigued. Uh, uh... Are you curious about this stuff, Rinwell? Uh, oh, uh... Yeah, I think he might have found some old Danon relics. They look like the remains of a bunch of objects that disappeared after the Renans first invaded. 
And yet here I am, holding them without so much as a second thought. I imagine this sight must be unsettling to you. Not really. Just that it must be nice to be a Renin who has time to indulge in stuff like that. Unlike the rest of us. Are you interested in this stuff too, Dohalim? Charmed may be a better turn of phrase. I simply love objects that can give me a sense of what their maker was thinking. The history that went into their creation. You see, we Renans have hardly any such objects that trace back to our distant past. I still don't understand what you two find so intriguing about it, though. Why not? We're talking about our own culture here. I get that, but it's not like this stuff is any use now, does it? It's just old. Real old. Oh, but it does. Holding it in your hands like this, one can feel and engage with the distant past in a way no history book can ever accomplish. I'll take your word for it. Well, seeing as it's Dan in history, just make sure you're careful with it. All right, Dohalim? But of course. <laughs>